Run. All he could think to do was run, knowing the creature was hot on his heels, chasing him down. He'd only caught glimpses of it in the dim glow of his flashlight, but seeing the shadow of a monster coming after him was enough to make AJ turn heel and sprint towards the exit. But the place was like a maze. He'd already been through a veritable labyrinth just to find the testing chamber, and now navigating his way back while racked with panic was near impossible. He rushed down abandoned corridors and burst through sets of double doors, feeling the impact of his sneakers against the floor send tremors up his legs as he ran for his life. Witnessing the grimy, disused laboratory hallways giving way to the garish, bright colors and creepy, grinning faces of the empty kindergarten gave AJ a bizarre sense of tonal whiplash every time it happened, and only made him feel more disorientated and all the more terrified at being pursued. All the while, his panicked brain was trying to recalculate the route back, half recalling or misremembering which turns he'd taken on his way down here. Had it been a left, followed by a right? Or was he getting confused now he was racing back in the opposite direction? What if he was only getting himself more and more lost? And what if that allowed the monster to catch up to him? Hide. When escape failed, it felt like the next best option. Find a secluded spot to hunker down, wait for the creature to pass by. Even something that size had to sleep eventually, right? At least, that's what AJ hoped, overlooking that this wasn't just a wild animal, but the grotesque result of a genetic experiment. He ducked through a door and into a small room, with a large window on one wall that looked into the neighboring room. It must have been a two-way mirror, some kind of interrogation room, or an observation room. Slamming the door shut behind him, AJ grabbed a chair and used it to seal himself inside. He jammed the back of the chair underneath the door handle, wedging the legs between the floor and the door. There was no chance that the hastily constructed barricade was going to hold for very long. From the other side of the door, there came the sound of steps, something padding about on all fours. AJ wasn't sure if it was the width of the door muffling the sound, but it seemed quiet for such a large monster. Maybe it was further away, or smaller than AJ had thought. Soon enough, he'd get his answer. The footsteps wandered past the observation room door to the next one along, leading into the room AJ could see through the two-way glass. To his surprise, what had walked in wasn't the monster he was expecting. Jumbo Josh, the giant green goliath of Ban Ban's gang. It was much smaller. The shadow cast by AJ's flashlight had made it seem much more imposing. As he peered through the mirror, he realized it bore a strikingly close resemblance to Jumbo Josh in every way but size. It was almost like… a baby? It had all begun several years before, way back when people had foolishly believed Ban Ban's kindergarten was exactly that, just a harmless daycare with nothing nefarious going on. And it was, at least in the beginning. The colorful characters of Ban Ban's crew were just part of the friendly look that brought the whole place together. That is, until Dr. Uthman Adam and his team arrived. You see, unbeknownst to almost everyone, especially the public, the ownership of Ban Ban's kindergarten had fallen into the hands of a new company. And strangely, nobody could find any records of that company's name any longer. It's almost as if it had never even existed in the first place. Behind the scenes, while the kindergarten operated as normal, the company had also acquired the rights to all the Ban Ban characters. This meant that Ban Ban, Ban Balina, Captain Fiddles, Jumbo Josh, Opila Bird, Nab Nab, Sheriff Toadster, Slow Celine, and Stinger Flynn all belonged to the kindergarten's new owners. And they had plans for these characters. They weren't just going to use them for marketing the kindergarten and start setting up multiple franchises under their brand. Oh no, they wanted to go a step further. The company was planning to bring these characters to life. That was where Dr. Uthman Adam came in, along with his team of scientists. Experts in genome splicing, as well as behavioral sciences, quickly began work in a facility that was installed deep underground, beneath the foundations of the kindergarten. Their mandate from the company was simple enough on paper. Bring the entire Ban Ban gang to life. They wanted Ban Ban's kindergarten and all the other franchises of it that they were planning on opening up to be staffed entirely by the mascots. They would teach lessons, play games, and, best of all, the company wouldn't need to pay teaching staff to do those jobs. But of course, even the most brilliant, or insane, scientist can't just magic fictional creatures into existence. So how was Dr. Uthman Adam instructed to go about this task? Luckily, he and his team were provided with access to Gavanium, the company's own patent-protected miracle matter. Gavanium was unlike anything else in existence, and was yet another closely guarded secret kept out of the public eye. 
Nobody knew where the element itself originated, whether it was discovered occurring naturally or developed in a lab somewhere. The scientists at the Banban -Ban facility knew better than to ask. Gavanium was provided by their benefactors, rolled in inside huge barrels from the company that funded their research. That was all they needed to know. Loose lips, after all, sank ships. As for what Gavanium did, under the right circumstances, it had the remarkable ability to generate new life, which made it the key to creating the Banban -Ban creatures. Under Dr. Adam's direction, the scientists were split up into multiple groups to conduct their experiments. They had their work cut out for them, after all, and a lot of characters to turn into living beings. So they set about attempting to do just that. One team was headed by a Dr. Mary Eaves, an expert in advanced genetic sequencing. She had been scouted by the company personally for her advanced research into the science of cloning, once believed to be a purely fictional concept. But with the help of Gavanium, Dr. Eaves could apply her theories to the Banban -Ban project and turn science fiction into science fact. Before long, after running various tests using Gavanium, the scientists and Dr. Eaves' team had one of their earliest successes. They'd achieved life. Providing a single cell with the right levels of glucose, light, and oxygen, then introducing Gavanium, had successfully resulted in creating a simple, single-celled organism. However, when they were informed of this significant progress, the company's response was less than enthusiastic. They demanded the experimentation be accelerated. They had a number of investors waiting to pour money into their plans. So the company needed results, something to show they were on track to bringing the Banban -Ban creatures to life. A single cell wasn't enough. They demanded more and fast. Outraged by their dismissal of her achievement, Dr. Eves returned to the lab fueled by her anger. She started using her vast knowledge of genetics to begin constructing living organic matter from scratch. Using her original single-celled organism as a launch pad, she was able to trigger cell division, enhanced by the Gavanium. That then led her to making what at first just seemed like a big blob of green clay, but with the right genetic programming, could one day be turned into a body. Yet again, the company was unimpressed. Their investors wouldn't fork over their money for a shapeless clay blob, the company stated they'd want to see at least one of the Banban -Ban characters up and walking about. Once again furious, Dr. Eves returned to her experiments, this time obsessed with providing a result that would be deemed satisfactory and would garner the praise that her other achievements so far had already been deserving of. She locked herself in the lab, refusing to work with her teammates, saying they'd only slow the process down. Even when Dr. Adam urged his colleague to follow the correct procedures, his advice was merely disregarded. Two weeks later, Dr. Eves presented her greatest achievement yet to her fellow scientists. She looked disheveled, as if she'd barely slept when she ordered everyone to come to her lab to witness the unveiling. The place was a mess, tables overturned, bottles of chemicals spilled on the floor, and a sheet haphazardly thrown over a specimen tank in the far corner. Bringing the other scientists into the room, Dr. Eves gripped the sheet and, in a single tug, brought it whooshing off to reveal what was in the tank. Floating inside, held dormant in stasis until it was ready to be awakened, was Jumbo Josh. Dr. Eves had done it. She'd brought the first of the Banban -Ban characters to life. Her genetic matter had successfully been shaped into the body of the creature, resembling a huge primate like a big green gorilla asleep in the massive, tube-like tank. The creation was met initially with stunned silence from the other scientists, which quickly gave way to a round of nervous applause. Exhausted, Dr. Eves was certain that another dose of Gavanium would awaken Jumbo Josh, and she had already started working on copies. All her formulas and the steps she had taken to create the huge green Goliath were scrawled down in her notes like the frantic scribblings of a madman. But contained within were the secrets to using the Gavanium to create living creatures. Wanting to give a full demonstration of what she'd achieved, Dr. Eves prepared to administer the injection of Gavanium that would bring her creature to life. Little did she realize what would happen when she did. As she injected Jumbo Josh with the Gavanium, the green monster awoke in his tank and immediately began to show signs of life. His eyes opened. He was moving independently. Concern suddenly spread among the scientists. Could Jumbo Josh even breathe in that specimen tank? It was filled with fluid and barely big enough to contain him. And sure enough, Quickly becoming agitated, Jumbo Josh went into a full-on frenzy and started smashing his fists against the glass of the tank. He was breaking out. The scientists either immediately ran for safety or begged Dr. Eves to get the creature under control. She barely acknowledged them, instead just looked at Jumbo Josh and began laughing maniacally. 
It had worked. She'd done it. Dr. Eves calmly grabbed her notes on her Gavanium experiments and a few other pieces of equipment, test tubes, doses of Gavanium, and a sample of the green clay she'd made Jumbo Josh out of. While the other scientists began to panic, Dr. Eves simply made her way to an exit. She didn't turn around when she heard the glass of the specimen tank shatter, or when Jumbo Josh let out a loud roar, followed by the screams of her horrified fellow scientists. As Jumbo Josh's rampage started, she left the facility with a big smile on her face. Despite all the chaos that had now broken out, she'd done it. Jumbo Josh was alive. Eventually, the company stepped in and had Jumbo Josh contained. The damage he'd caused certainly put a delay in the ongoing experiments, but despite all the carnage, they were still pleased. Dr. Eves was now missing along with her notes, but her methods had worked. All their scientists had to do now was find a way to refine the process and bring the other Banban -Ban characters to life. Shortly after, Dr. Uthman Adam learned of a better way to harness Gavanium. Monsters like Jumbo Josh, made through Dr. Eves' method with pure Gavanium, were extremely dangerous. They turned into aimless killers destroying anything in their path out of uncontrollable rage. Through further testing of the contained Jumbo Josh, Dr. Adam realized that pure Gavanium caused the creatures to suffer a near-constant pain. That was what had caused Jumbo Josh to go on a rampage moments after being awakened. But he discovered that, if he were to combine the raw Gavanium element with the genome of another living organism, then it would create a Gavanium solution. The creatures made using this solution had a lower percentage of Gavanium in their systems, and this decreased the level of pain they experienced. Before too long, the scientists were working around the clock to combine animal genomes with Gavanium in order to bring life to the remaining Banban -Ban creatures. The Jumbo Josh rampage had caused a significant delay in their experiments, and for a brief while, the company had been lenient. However, the moment Dr. Adam had discovered the potential of the Gavanium solution, the company's leniency had rapidly dwindled. In fact, they'd brought the deadline forward thanks to the development, giving Dr. Adam and the other scientists less time to create the creatures and train them for their tasks of teaching at the kindergarten. And it was during the scientists' rush to meet the company's demanding deadline that nobody realized somebody had snuck back into the lab. Dr. Eves had been in hiding, continuing her experiments, hoping to use pure Gavanium to unlock the secrets of perfect cloning. However, the sample she had taken when she walked out on the day of Jumbo Josh's rampage wasn't enough. Luckily for her, her access card hadn't been revoked, she was still in the system, and that meant she could sneak back in undetected. And while she was there, she discovered what had been done to her creation. Jumbo Josh had been locked up, thanks to his Gavanium pains making him highly dangerous. And whether out of spite or madness, Dr. Eves decided to set her creation free once more. The company had abandoned the facility and the project after the scientists met a grisly demise. The Banban -Ban creatures were left in the abandoned kindergarten, and for a time, the whole place fell silent. That is, until someone filed a report that baffled the local police. Apparently, a crazed woman in a worn-out lab coat had been sighted going to and from the old abandoned Ban Ban's kindergarten. The police had received a mysterious donation from an unnamed company to ignore the report and not investigate it any further. But the story had already gotten out to an independent investigative journalist known as AJ. What AJ had uncovered at the kindergarten was unlike anything he'd ever seen before. Case reports that detailed the bizarre experiments involving a life-giving element named Gavanium, and of course, the creatures, living, breathing, walking, and in some cases, talking, all created to resemble the colorful mascots of Ban Ban's kindergarten. Venturing deeper into the lab beneath the kindergarten, AJ had been ambushed by what he thought to be Jumbo Josh, the huge green beast he'd seen paintings of all over the walls of the kindergarten. But he was surprised to see that the creature that had been chasing him was actually what appeared to be a baby version of Jumbo Josh, a kind of mini Josh. The smaller green creature didn't seem all that aggressive as AJ watched from the observation room. In fact, it was almost cute. It looked around the room with an unmistakable curiosity. Compared to all the other monsters made by the Gavanium experiments, this one seemed far more friendly. So AJ made the decision to try and approach Mini Josh. Stepping into the other room, the small green creature moved like a lemur or another small primate, regarding AJ with caution at first. But as he reached out a hand to reassure Mini Josh he meant no harm, the creature playfully leaped up onto AJ's shoulder. That's when the roar rang out. 
Looking down the corridor, AJ felt his heart drop to the pit of his stomach. It was Jumbo Josh, the fully grown original monster. He came barreling through the facility, the heavy stomps of his feet cracking the floor beneath as he broke into a charge. With mini Josh in his arms, AJ ran as fast and far as he could. He was confused and terrified, his fear carrying him through the corridor. He'd come down here via an elevator, there had to be some way back up to the kindergarten level. Mini Josh seemed to be hugging him, gripping AJ's shirt as the pair of them were chased by Jumbo Josh. Suddenly, passing through another set of double doors, something tripped AJ up. He stumbled and fell to the floor, feeling Mini Josh leaving his arms. Looking around for the baby creature in confusion, AJ then noticed there was someone else here. A woman. The first and only other human being he'd come across in the entire facility. She appeared to be completely disheveled, her clothes covered in filth as she scrambled to shut the doors before Jumbo Josh got closer. She locked the doors just as the Green Goliath was about to come barreling through, and he collided with a loud thud from the other side. He began angrily pounding on the doors, still trying to get through. AJ clambered to his feet, noticing Mini Josh hiding in a corner not far away. He went over to the baby monster, and he quickly climbed back up into AJ's arms, but noticing this, the woman became enraged. It was Dr. Eves. She'd been living in the depths of the facility since getting Jumbo Josh free. While the Ban Ban Gang had taken control of the kindergarten above, she'd been obsessively continuing her experiments using her old notes and the leftover equipment stored in the lab. After all, the mad science and cloning were secrets only she knew. Somehow, she'd created a smaller duplicate of Jumbo Josh, her continued experiments resulting in Mini Josh. While the pure Gavanium left Jumbo Josh in constant pain, she had tried to recreate a baby version to allow it to grow at a natural rate instead of just being brought to life instantly using the Gavanium. Dr. Eve started yelling unintelligibly at AJ. She'd been isolated down in the lab for so long, only interacting with her creations, that she'd forgotten how to communicate with other people. AJ couldn't follow what she was shouting, something about letting Mini Josh go so Jumbo Josh could get him. But AJ wasn't about to let that happen. Dr. Eves kept insisting he didn't know what he was doing, and to listen to what she said. The elevator was right there, and AJ went to leave with Mini Josh in tow. Suddenly, Dr. Eves tackled AJ to the floor, clawing at him, trying to make him drop Mini Josh. AJ, thinking she was trying to harm the cute green clone, tried to shield the creature. They tussled, with the mad scientist eventually getting the upper hand, ripping Mini Josh from AJ's arms and giving the investigator an extra kick to keep him down. She stood up, holding Mini Josh, before she turned back towards the locked door. With the full force of his strength, Jumbo Josh burst through the doors, knocking them clean off their hinges. As AJ watched from the floor, the hulking green monster stomped slowly towards the scientist as Dr. Eves held Mini Josh in outstretched arms. The creature the smaller monster had been cloned from seemed to pause, observing Mini Josh for what might have been the very first time. Then, without warning, Jumbo Josh became angered once again. Perhaps the sight of his baby highlighted his own imperfections, or he interpreted it as a replacement. Or maybe his pain from the pure Gavanium had just had a sudden surge. But whatever the reason, he charged once again, directly towards Dr. Eves and Mini Josh. Before AJ could get to his feet, all three were tumbling down the elevator shaft. He looked down, trying to see if any of them had survived. It was too dark to tell, and far too quiet. <laughs>